Good morning, church. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your word. And this morning, as we come, quarten our hearts to listen to your word, we pray that, God, we will pay attention to what you're going to say to us today. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my saviour. In Jesus' name, Amen. A wise sage observe. As you go through life, you are going to have many opportunities to keep your mouth shut. Take advantage of all of them. This is very wise advice, isn't it? We often find ourselves talking too much or finding it hard to tame our tongue. As we move to James chapter 3, James has gone from preaching to interfering. He has just made it clear that genuine faith works, which Elder Terence shared with us last Sunday. If God has changed your heart through the new birth, the saving faith that he granted to you will inevitably show itself in the life of good works and deeds. Jesus has given everyone who believes in him a new life. The question is, have you lived out this new life? Have you been living out the love of Christ in the midst of your community? Now in chapter 3, James moves from talking about good deeds to focus on the word, words that you speak. Genuine faith, James said, must lead to submitting to Christ's lordship in taming of your tongue. Like David, all true believers will pray, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. While the tongue may never, never be totally tamed, if you know Christ as Saviour, then you are engaged in this ongoing battle to tame it. It would be nice if during your conversion, you can have a total makeover of your mouth, but it is not so. Let us be mindful that even though we became new creatures in Christ, we also carry around us this old nature, the flesh which wage war against the spirit. The tongue is one of the major, major battlegrounds in the war. And to become holy and godly people, we must fight this way daily. Hence, to express our love in taming of the tongue, we must recognize the tremendous multitude and magnitude of the battle that we face. And let me share with you four truths on how we can express our love in taming of the tongue. Firstly, to express our love in taming of the tongue, we must be made accountable for what we say. And that is in James chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. And James started in verse 1 by warning that many of us should not be teachers because of the stricter accountability God demands in the office. Becoming a teacher, we know, has certain prestige and honour. Presumably, people will look up to you because you know more than those that you teach. And because of this, there is this built-in danger that some will take upon themselves the office of Bible teacher for the wrong reasons. Or those who took up the position for the right reason will later fall into pride. If a man goes into teaching the Bible because of the secret desires for status and recognition, he is doing it for himself and not for the Lord. And the point that James is making is this. You should not take on the role of teacher unless God has called you to it because teachers will incur a stricter judgment from God. And we who teach God's word will be more accountable because our words affect many people. Any time that we teach, we should keep in mind the serious fact that we will stand before the Lord to give an account. And verse 2 further explains verse 1. James includes himself when he says, For we, are, we all stumble in many ways. We are all prone to sin. I know one popular pastor who emphasised that we should not view ourselves as sinners, but as saints who occasionally sin. Well, by God's grace, I'm a saint, but I'm a saint who stumbles in many ways 
not just occasionally. James then zeroes in on the tongue, saying, If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body as well. Perfect does not mean sinlessly perfect, but rather mature. We can never achieve sinless perfection in this life, but we can grow to spiritual maturity. One important gauge is your speech. One way to tame the tongue is to recognise that we will all be held accountable for our speech. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 36 to 37, But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Jesus was not teaching about justification by works. But like James, he was teaching that our works reveal whether our faith is genuine faith. And how can we be made accountable for our speech? Let me suggest that you ask yourself three questions every time before you speak. Is what I'm saying about to say true? Is what I am about to say necessary? Is what I am about to say helpful? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our words either validate, validate us that we are true believers or reveal that we do not know God. If we sin with our speech, we need to ask God's forgiveness and also the forgiveness of the one whom we sin against. As genuine believers, if you truly love God and man, you must have this sense of accountability for your speech. Let us, let us be careful with our words. And secondly, to express our love in taming of the tongue, we need to be conscious of its power for good or for evil. And that is in verse 3 to 5. And James uses here two analogies to, point, to make the point that the tongue is small but mighty, the beat and the rudder. A beat is a relatively small instrument, but when you put it into the horse mouth, you can control the entire horse. The same thing is true of the sheep rudder. It is relatively small compared to the size of the sheep, but with his hand on the wheel, the pilot can steer a big ship even in a strong current or strong wind. And Jean's point of comparison, he talks so much about the matter of control, but of the influence of such a small part. And James says here in 3, chapter 3, verse 5, So also the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. And James is saying, Don't underestimate the power of the tongue, because if you do, you weren't able to tame it. Did you get what James is saying here? He's saying that our tongue has the power to influence direction. If you control your tongue, it can direct your whole life into what is acceptable in God's sight. If you don't control your tongue, it will get you into great trouble. James would strongly disagree with the familiar children's taunt. Stick and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. James is very well aware that, you know, and we can see in this passage that words are powerful. They can either build or destroy a person. So please, be very careful with our words. They can have a very powerful impact on the lives of others. Now, Karen Carpenter died unexpectedly of heart failure at age 32, brought on by years of self-abuse from eating disorder, anorexia nervosa. Later, CBS, the US television station, released a program called The Karen Carpenter Story. The USA Today, in commenting on this program, asked the question, but what brought on Karen's fatal obsession with weight control? And that is why, why Karen is so obsessed with weight control? The answer given was that it seems a reviewer 
many years before had once referred to Karen as Richard's chubby sister. It is hard to fathom that a single negative comment could change the course of someone else's life. And because of that comment that she's too fat, it has destroyed her life altogether. Teachers, parents, beware of negative words. Words like, you're stupid, you're too fat, you're too short, you're too slow. And these words will definitely have negative impact on your children. Let us heed the advice of Proverbs 12, 18. There's one who speaks rashly, like the trust of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Imagine that all of us here today were carrying into church a razor-sharp, two-edged sword. It would be a miracle if we get through the service without anyone getting cut or hurt. The fact is, we all have this razor-sharp, two-edged sword in our mouths. We should use them with the greatest care to bring healing, not injury. We pay great attention that our tongues will be used as a source of sweetness and healing in our homes and our church. So James wants us to be held accountable for how we should use our tongues, especially those of us who teach God's Word. He wants us to be conscious of the inordinate power of the tongue, either for good or for evil, so that we can use it carefully. And thirdly, to express love in taming of the tongue, we need to recognize that it is a humanly untamable source of terrible evil. And that is in verse 5 to 8. James uses two more word pictures for comparison and contrast, a forest fire and tame animal. In verse 6, James states directly, and the tongue is a fire, the very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and set on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. The point James is making here is clear. The tongue is deadly, powerful source of evil that taints every part of our being. If we do not use our tongues with great caution, we are like spiritual arsonists, lighting carelessly fires that cause widespread destruction. Beware, James says, if you have a careless tongue, it will damage your entire life. Now, I know most Christians would not be able to tolerate sins like homosexuality, molesting children or murder, and we consider them as serious sin or crime. But yet, we tolerate gossip, slander, deceit, half-truths and other sins of the tongue as if they were no big deal. If you speak negative all the time, if you lash out at others, if you gossip and start fires, your tongue becomes a weapon of mass destruction. Now, a pastor in a small town had a notorious gospel in his church. And she turned her gossip on him. So one day, this lady felt convicted and she came and asked the pastor for forgiveness. The pastor said, of course, I'll forgive you. But then he asked her to do something strange. Please take a pillow, cut it open and go to the top of a hill overlooking our town and throw the feathers into the wind. She thought this strange, but she did it anyway. And the feathers floated across the whole town. Then the pastor said, One more thing. Could you go and pick them all up, please? Gossip is so destructive. And you can't take all those words back. And you cannot undo the damage. And James says that all such sins have their origin in the pit of hell. They defile the one committing it, they destroy others, and as a believer in Christ, 
you must confront these sins in yourself and you must be bold enough to confront them in others. If you master your tongue, you can speak words of life and it can become God's instruments. Dear brothers and sisters, do you desire that your tongue be used as God's mouthpiece to always speak words of life and blessings, to always speak words of love and forgiveness? James go on to use an analogy from the animal world. If you've been to sea world, you have seen trained whales, dolphins and seals. At the circus, you've seen trained elephants, lions and tigers. But James says that there is one beast that cannot be tamed. And that is the human tongue. He adds, it is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Being restless means there is never a time when it sleeps. You must always be on guard against it. Being full of deadly poison, you should handle it as cautiously as you would handle coronavirus. It is very dangerous. It is infectious. So please note that James does not say that the tongue is untamable. He says that no one, no man can tame it. It is humanly untamable. Only God can tame it. James does not state that because he wants us to get a clear view of this horrible monster that we must do better with. And when the Holy Spirit controls your heart on a daily basis, over time the fruit of the Spirit will appear, and this include love, patience, kindness, gentleness and self-control, which all relate to the control of the tongue. To tame this terrible tongue, you must daily walk in the Spirit, taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And ultimately, an evil tongue is the tool of an evil heart. And that is James' final point. And that is, fourthly here, to express love in taming of the tongue, we need to deal with its inconsistencies which are rooted in its source, the heart. And that is in verses 9 to 12. And James points out a gross inconsistency that he had observed. Christians say, praise the Lord, in one breath and in the next breath, they say evil things about another person made in the likeness of God. They sit in church singing hymns to God, praising God, and no sooner get out of the door, and then they whisper to one, to one another, did you see so and so? She makes me sick. She's such a hypocrite. Why? why? Why do you know what she did? And so on and so on. James get very direct here in verse 10. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Then he points out that what often happens among Christians is contrary to all of nature. The same spring does not send out fresh water in one minute and bitter water the next. He asks rhetorically, Can a fig tree, my brethren, produce olives, or a vine produce figs? Neither can salt water produce fresh water. His point is the same as that of Jesus in Matthew 12, 34. And Jesus said, You brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that fills the heart. Jesus also said in Matthew 15, 18, But the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and those defile the man. The mouth is simply the opening that vents whatever is in the heart. If there's raw garbage in your heart, there will be raw garbage gushing from the mouth. And that's why Proverbs 4.33 exhorts us, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. So if you want to tame the terrible tongue, the place to start is your heart. This is what exactly James is targeting it at, your heart. Word 
work daily at taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Walk daily under the control of the Holy Spirit. Continue in the Word and allow the Word of God to dwell richly in you. Now, how can the Word of God help me in the taming of the tongue? Now, over the years, I find that the most important single aid to my ability to use my tongue for the glory of Jesus is allowing the Word of God to dwell in me so richly that I will speak words that edify and encourage to others. When I do, the result is teaching and demolishing one another in all wisdom, singing and in word or deed, doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God our Father. And that is why it's so important to be under the ministry of the Word, where the Scriptures are expounded with the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. And it is by this means, yes, with spending quiet time with God, that the Word of God begins to do its own spiritual work in us. As words that have been formed in God's mouth are digested as bread of life by us, they begin to form our thinking, affections and decision in a wonderful way. We need to see that we live by every word that comes out of God's mouth. God's word sanctifies us. The more I awake in the morning and feed myself with the scripture, and the more I'm saturated with the word under a biblical ministry, the more the word of Christ will do the sanctifying work in me, on me, and consequently, the more Christ will train my tongue as word molds and shapes me. Dear brothers and sisters, do you wish you could control your tongue better? Do you want to better express love in the taming of the tongue? Then these things you must do. Firstly, you must learn to hold accountable for how we use our tongues. Secondly, we must be conscious of this inordinate power of the tongue, either for good or for evil, so that we use it carefully. Thirdly, we must recognize that the tongue causes massive destruction. And if you are not careful, you will cause a mass destruction. Lastly, to tame the tongue, we must deal with our heart condition. We must allow the Word of God to dwell richly in our hearts and mind. We must also let our heart hear the Word of God again and again as it renew and begin to produce a transformed tongue. The principle is this. What comes out of my mouth is more and more determined by what has come out of the mouth of God. We want to be godly. We want to express our love for God and shine for Jesus. But listen, don't ignore what the Lord is saying to you today. If you cannot master your tongue, James says your faith, no matter how good it looks, is dead. Some of us here are reaping the pain and destruction our tongue has created over years with friends and loved ones. And some are bearing the scars of someone else's tongue. But nothing is beyond God's healing hand. And He can tame your tongue today. If your tongue has been an offensive weapon in the past, I want you to pray a prayer to master your tongue once and for all. Now, it's not a once-off prayer. It is a continual day-by-day prayer. And some here may need forgiveness and restoration for the damage the tongue has done. And God is calling you to master your tongue. And also, if you have felt the pain of someone else's tongue, and those words, whether true or not, have cut you to the core, I'm praying today specifically for the healing for you. Now, last month, we have started this post-service response. Now, it's basically a service we want to offer to everyone to make a response to the worship service. And these are some of the responses you may have after the service. You may feel that the Lord has spoken to you through the songs or sermon 
and you want to write an encouragement to the worship team or to the speaker. Or you, after hearing the sermon, you may have a question and you may also write down in the response. Or maybe you have a need, a prayer need, and you want someone to pray for you. You can put it in the response form. Or simply you want to talk to someone, especially during this period, that you feel that you're so pressured, that you're so stressed, and you want to talk to somebody. Put it down in this response form. And you may go to the link and respond to this form. And once you receive your response, we will get in touch with you. So, brothers and sisters, may the Lord help us to tame our tongue. That as we tame our tongue, we allow the Spirit to use our life, to use our speech, to continue to bring glory and praise to His name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, here in my tongue, let it speak only for you. Let my words live up and not tear down. Like the hymn writer Francis Ridley, who wrote these words, let it be our prayer too. Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Lord, continue to guard our tongues. Continue, Lord, to help us through the mighty work of the Holy Spirit to sanctify us. Especially, Lord, continue to watch our hearts. May all that we fill our hearts, Lord, we want to fill it, Lord, with Your Word. And we want to feel it so much that, Lord, you continue to dwell in us. And let your word continue to change our hearts. And that, Lord, all the words that come out from our mouth will bring blessings. We only talk about love. We only talk about forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.